morning squad welcome back to mad Mizzy sports morning show the number one spot for everything sports talk sports news sports debate in the morning and we got a nice little rundown today to start off thursday happy thursday we're gonna start it off with the huge news of the miami dolphins giving nick chubb well bradley chubb 26 years old a five-year 119 million dollar contract extension then we got to move on to the news of the Washington police having a suspect being charged with the shooting of Brian Robinson that occurred on August 28th. Then we got to speak on the Houston Astros tying up the World Series 2-2 in Philadelphia last night off a no-hit performance. And then we got the Lakers advancing the 2-1 with Russell coming off the bench and Russell giving us 13-9-7 last night. Have they finally found a formula and we got to get props to Russell Westbrook for owning this role. The Bucks advanced to 7-0 in the East in the NBA this year, winning off of 13, 12, and 4 from Giannis Antetokounmpo. Are the Bucks the clear best favorite in the Eastern Conference? And is Giannis Antetokounmpo the clearly best player in the NBA? And then we got to come back and break down Thursday night football or the of the Philadelphia Eagles at the Houston Texans. Let's get into it, gang gang. So we're going to start off going back down to Miami. Yesterday I broke the news. Well, not broke the news, but I broke down the news of the Miami Dolphins and all the moves that they made during the trade deadline, acquiring Jeff Wilson Jr. and then acquiring Bradley Chubb from the Denver Broncos. And now, given Bradley Chubb, that was on the final year of his rookie contract, five-year contract extension worth $119 million, $63.2 million guaranteed. Huge news for the Miami Dolphins to relieve some of that stress from Bradley Chubb to have him go out there and not worry about anything else besides rushing the passer and getting ready for that home stretch of the regular season and the playoffs. I love this move. Um, and you think about him being just 26 years old, it's a five-year contract, so he'll be 31 at the end of his contract. And being in the, in the division with Josh Allen, you're going to need somebody that's going to be able to rush the passer and get the pass show on the ground. That was the thing that the Buffalo Bills needed when they faced Patrick Mahomes. That's why they went out there and got Vaughn Miller. That's why the Dolphins went out there and got Vaughn Miller's little protege, Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb. So, love the move from the Miami Dolphins now and moving forward. Now all Bradley Chubb got to go out there and do is ball. Love the move. So, the Washington Police Department has released the news that they have a suspect charged with the shooting of Brian Robinson that occurred on 8-28, and, and it is a 17-year-old minor that is being charged with robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. Um, just a, a bunch of charges, and to me, it's just reflecting how lost our youth is, how much more we got to do for our youth, and how much more the youth has to want more. You get what I'm saying? Like, you can't have PMB Rock being getting killed by a 16, 17 year old minor while he's on probation. You can't have Brian Robinson being robbed and shot, shot twice in the leg by a 17 year old during a robbery. What are these 17 year olds doing? You get what I'm saying? Like this is, this is not okay, this is not cool. These are the, the only 17 year olds in our community, in our culture. And it reflects how much they are being influenced by the music in our culture that glorifies robbery and killing people during robberies or shooting people shooting people during robbery so to me we got to get back down here we got to lace up our boots get in the grind and save these kids because they are completely lost this happened in washington dt i am in philadelphia where kids are dying left and right kids are at war with each other right now and they are lost and then you got kids that are on the outskirts that they don't know where to turn to they don't know where to turn to because the the youth that's around them their their generation the people that are around them they are into opt this and opt that and shoot this and shoot that over any little thing. Rob this, rob that. We gotta address the music that these kids are listening to and making sure that they're not being super influenced by it, especially our young males. We, as the uh, millennials, we gotta come back down and we gotta grab these Gen Zs. We gotta do more for these Gen Zs. We gotta show more to these Gen Zs and these Gen Zs have to accept the guidance that's given to us. Let's move on to the Houston Astros tying up the World Series 2-2 off of a no-hit performance mostly by Javier that went six innings pitch, no hits, got pulled out in the seventh and then the bullpen closed out the rest of the game. No hit performance by the entire uh, Astros bullpen and the starting pitcher. What a performance, needed it in Philadelphia. Have they shifted the, the momentum back in their favor? I would, I would say slightly, but I wouldn't say all the way simply because you have game five still back in Philadelphia. I feel like Philadelphia needs this game more than Houston does because you have to force Houston to go, you have to force the Astros to go back to Houston needing a win 
to extend the series, not needing a win to win the series. Because if they need a win to win the series, going back to Houston in game six, nine times out of 10, they're going to grab that game. So Philly cannot let this game slip away in Philadelphia. Use the the excitement of the fans use the can't even say the weather because it's been unseasonably nice in philadelphia for november so listen they got to go out there they got to be prepared to i mean justin verlander ha has been been playing pretty poorly in the world series over his career so oh man it's, it's this is a must win in my opinion for the philadelphia phillies i feel like the houston astros have a slight have the momentum slightly of course you just won the last game you're going to have a little bit of the momentum but the phillies have the momentum of being home on their side being home on their side and then going up against justin verlander who struggles in the world series justin verlander who they got to in game one after a few innings so listen i i, I i'm very interested in seeing how this game five unravels because i feel like the philadelphia phillies need it and it's, it's going to be a highly competitive game tonight let's move on to basketball and the lakers advance to two and one with russell westbrook coming off of the bench russell westbrook last night had 13 points nine rebounds seven assists tip my cat to russell westbrook with russell westbrook in the starting lineup the offense was scoring about 102 points per game with russell westbrook coming off the bench they're scoring about over 120 points per game so i i just want to say that russell westbrook what a job and looking at yourself and seeing how you could extend your Hall of Fame career as long as you can. Because one thing that we see that couldn't happen with another beloved superstar, and that's Allen Iverson, is that he couldn't swallow that pride. He couldn't look himself in the mirror and see the player that he wasn't and see that he wasn't the player of old that he didn't deserve to be in the starting lineup no more, that he was better suited coming off of the bench now. So to see Russell Westbrook swallow that pride and take a step back and own where he is in his career right now and own his role in the NBA right now and taking off with it right now like almost averaging a triple double coming off of the bench so I love what we're seeing from Russell Westbrook um and with him being bashed all last year we just got to go out there and give this man praise for attempting anything to make it work in Los Angeles and not just sitting on the bench and pouting like Allen Iverson was when he was in Memphis or when he was in Detroit then I then, then the Philadelphia 76ers was like, all right, man, I guess you can come back here since we ain't got nobody and ball out and start here. So I, I just love the fact that we won't remember Russell Westbrook for last year and him airballing layups, shooting three pointers off the side of the backboard. And we're possibly going to remember him for coming off of the bench and reviving his career, almost kind of like a Carmelo Anthony. Tip my cap off to Russell Westbrook for how he's just owning this role and not letting his ego get the best of what's best for not only himself and his career but the los angeles lakers the los angeles lakers let's move on the milwaukee bucks advanced to seven and oath in the nba so far this year off a of 32 12 and 4 from Giannis antetokounmpo are they the clearly best favorites in the eastern conference right now for me i have to say hands down they're clearly the best team in the eastern conference or the favorites to win the eastern conference right now you think about they don't have chris middleton imagine when they get chris middleton back this team seems like they're just on a mission to rectify what they feel was probably a squandered opportunity when chris middleton got injured in the playoffs last year and Giannis couldn't carry that team through the Boston Celtics. I know the the Milwaukee Bucks looked like looked at it like they missed the opportunity last year to repeat as NBA champs. So they look like they're on a mission and and, to, and as soon as Chris Middleton comes back, they're they're gonna be unstoppable because we know that's what the formula was for them down the stretch of their championship run was Chris Middleton be the closer as Giannis Antetokounmpo is just clearly the most dominant player on the floor so I'm not uh shocked at all they are the favorites to win it all in the Eastern Conference so far and Giannis Antetokounmpo is just clearly the most dominant player in the NBA right now when you think about what he does on the offensive and what he does on the defensive and the pressure he puts on you uh attacking the rim all game long protecting the rim all game long he just puts so much pressure on you to be uh great perimeter oriented team because he and Brooke Lopez down lower just twin towers then you think about he's always putting this putting your team in foul trouble because he's going to attack the rim pound the paint and he's going to make some tough shots he's well he's going to make some tough layups so I, I just love Giannis Antetokounmpo's game his heart and his will to be great I feel like that's the one thing that separates him from the rest of the pack is his will to want to be great you just look at his body type and then putting on what 50 pounds of muscle from the time he came in the NBA yeah let's move on to Thursday night football of the Philadelphia Eagles at the Houston Texans I just got to say this the Philadelphia Eagles got to watch out for this game this is not a little trap game but a game that they just can't overlook this team like oh we got them and Jalen Hurts to me is the key to that in his level-minded way 
way of carrying himself and not being up too high, not being down too low, and not looking at any, looking past any opponent, in my opinion, of Jalen Hurts is that's how he carries himself. Is just he just stays focused on the task at hand and what's in front of him. Him being a Houston kid, being from Houston, going back home, I feel like he's gonna want to go out there and ball out but I don't think he's going to force anything I feel like the Eagles will win in controlling fashion the Texans give up 186 rush yards per game and the Philadelphia Eagles are one of the top running teams in the NFL so I see them winning in controlling fashion Miles Sanders having a huge game then you got Jalen Hurts hitting Devontae Smith and AJ Brown and Dallas Goddard off of a play action and all that stuff hitting the big plays so I see the Eagles winning in controlling fashion 26-10 pulling away not pulling away towards the end but I see it probably being a close game through the first quarter, first quarter and a half, then the Eagles start to pull away towards that second half of the second quarter and then the rest of the game. So, yeah, I got the Eagles winning 26 to 10 in Houston tonight. What are the odds that the Philadelphia Eagles can remain undefeated this year? I'm going to say they have pretty good odds, but I do want to say that they have to watch, watch out for the two teams in their division, the New York Giants and then the Dallas Cowboys, who I do believe that they both they have to both play at least one more time. So, to me... That's the team to uh, the two teams to look out for for the Philadelphia Eagles. But overall, I don't know if the Eagles want to. I don't think going undefeated is, a, is an aspiration for the Philadelphia Eagles. I know for the fans, it's, it's a good thing. It's a thing to put. It's a it's a thing to talk about. Um, but the number one priority for the Philadelphia Eagles is going into the playoffs healthy and having that number one uh, that number one seed. So if the Minnesota Vikings start to slip up, if the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants start to slip up, I feel like they already probably have enough space between us. I mean, the forty my Niners and and them. So I, they they have a lot of space right now. So if they come down the the last like week sixteen, week seventeen, and they got the number one slot wrapped up. I don't see them going out there and risking Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Miles Sanders to try to go undefeated because you lose one of those dudes and then that offense is not the same. You get what I'm saying? So keep the continuity going as far as as long as you can. If you need the wins, like if the Minnesota Vikings keep winning and they keep in pace and then you then hey, it is what it is. But as far as going out there and doing it just to do it or just doing it just as an accomplishment, I don't think the Eagles will do that, especially seeing as though they're one of those physical teams. But hey, who knows? But as far as odds, I would give it about a, a 60% chance. A 60% a 60 chance of the Philadelphia Eagles going undefeated. But um, I don't see it happening. I, I don't see it happening. I see a hiccup somewhere. Somewhere. We don't see it, but a, a hiccup is going to happen somewhere. So, yeah. Let me know what y'all think. What's the odds of the Philadelphia Eagles remaining undefeated? Who do y'all got tonight in the Philadelphia Eagles at the Houston Texans? Are the Bucks the clear favorites in the Eastern Conference this year? Is Giannis Antetokounmpo finally, clearly the best player in the NBA? I've been saying he's been clearly the best player in the NBA the past two, three years. And have the Houston Astros shifted the momentum in their favorite going into game five tonight in Philadelphia? Let me know what y'all think. This is Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. Like comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert, Missy World Entertainment, gang.